So, uh, I was trying to figure out what to talk to you about. And uh, on the schedule, it says how to dress taller and leaner, which is important. Uh, but I took a little informal poll on the Facebook group for StyleCon, and I was trying to figure out if you wanted to hear more about you know, the style side of things or the business side of things. Uh, and it seems like, overwhelmingly, you guys wanted to hear a little bit about the business side of things. And I'm really excited about that because I love talking about that stuff and uh, I don't get to do it very often. You know, I talk about style all day, every day. So what I'm going to talk to you about is how to choose a topic and a name for your blog or your YouTube channel or your online business. And I think this is important because uh, especially after having gotten to know a lot of you guys over the past couple of days, it seems like there's so many people here who really want to start something or maybe even have something that's just not quite there yet or they want to grow it. Uh, and they just don't know, you know, you don't know what to talk about or like what to uh, specialize in. And it's kind of like Ryan was talking about where you're in this cycle and I see so much awareness happening and then I see the excuses happening. And one of the big excuses is I don't know what to talk about. You know, who am I to be an expert in whatever. So I'm going to teach you two very, very simple ways to come up with a really powerful, really unique niche for your business, and then very briefly how to name it. And I'm going to try to leave plenty of time for questions and maybe even some workshopping. Uh, if any of you guys are at that stage where you want to start something, we can talk a little bit about your idea and see if we can hone it down. Cool? OK, this is important because the competition is very stiff right now. Uh, this isn't 2008. You know, it's, it's not 2009. Uh, it's 2016 and there are a lot of blogs and there's a lot of YouTube channels. Um, on WordPress alone, there's 76 million blogs. So that's one blogging platform. Uh, you know, on the whole internet, there's probably 300 million plus blogs. You know, who knows how many Instagram accounts and Twitter accounts and, uh, and YouTube channels. Every day, 50,000 new blogs are created. You know, that's, that's a hard number to even imagine. Three million new blog posts are published. So since I started talking, over 200 blogs have been created. So for one person, every person in this room, like, created a new site since I've been on this stage. You know, I don't say this to discourage you, though. You know, I, I, want, I want you to start something, you know. Uh, starting The Modest Man, uh, my site has been the best decision I ever made. You know, it can lead to uh, the freedom that you want. You know, whether it's financial freedom or time freedom or location independence, it can do that. But I don't recommend right now in 2016 starting another Real Men Real Style, you know, or going up against GQ. I think you have to specialize. And especially at the beginning, you have to do something that really sets you apart from the competition. And after you do that, after you make a name for yourself and you grow an audience, even a small audience, you can branch out. You know, and you can talk about whatever you want. But you got to do something at the beginning to get noticed. So that's what I did. Um, I picked something about myself, you know, the most fundamental thing. I'm a short guy, right? <laughs> and I specialize in that because I realized that it's really hard to dress well as a guy that's 5'6 in boots, 130 pounds soaking wet. You know, clothes don't fit me. And I thought, well, if I have this problem, maybe the other 20 million adult American men who are under 5'9 also have this problem. And so I built a website that solves that problem. And, you know, people always say to me, usually you know, guys who aren't really in, like, the online uh, blogging space, they say, you know, man, you should pivot a little bit and, like, open up your, your range because, like, a lot of your content uh, applies to every guy, not just shorter guys. So, like, why not get everybody? And I say, I don't want everybody, you know, I want the modest men. Because right now I'm only reaching 100,000 of them every month. I want a million, you know, 10 million. And that's enough. Like, you don't need every single person to visit your website to build a lucrative business. You can do it with 100 true fans, 1,000 true fans, you know, 10,000 true fans. So I would encourage you to specialize right at the beginning. And the methods I'm going to teach you 
uh, will help you do that, and they're really, really simple. So the first method is called the two qualifier rule, okay? And this is the idea that you take whatever topic you're passionate about, fitness, style, cooking, whatever, and you add two unique qualifiers to turn, turn it into a special niche that you can be the authority in. So we'll go through a couple examples of this. Say you're passionate about cooking. I don't think it's a good idea to compete with food.com, you know, or All Recipes, or Food Network, or Martha Stewart, or the tens of thousands of other cooking blogs that are out there. So let's add some qualifiers. Cooking for men. We're already getting somewhere. We've already eliminated half the population, which is a good thing. Okay, but still, there's a lot of guys that want to cook. Cooking for men with children. And now we have something like dadskitchen.com. And if that's available, go buy it right now, by the way. <laughs> and the thing is, dadskitchen.com is cool because dad is unique, you know? Dad has two hours of work to do after dinner, and he got home late, and it's his night to cook, and his daughter doesn't like vegetables, and his son is in a peanut butter sandwich phase, you know, and he's got 20 minutes, and he's got to whip something up, and he wants to be healthy, and he can't cook, you know? So he Googles, and he finds food.com, Martha Stewart, and then he sees dadskitchen.com. You better believe he's clicking on dadskitchen.com. And when he finds it, if he likes your content, you've got yourself a fan for life, guaranteed, 100%. And if you have a cookbook, he's buying your cookbook. You know? And it's not that mom doesn't like dadskitchen.com. In fact, I think mom will probably leave it open on dad's computer, so he starts pulling his weight around here. But dad's going to love dadskitchen.com. And it's better to have one loyal fan than a thousand casual readers. You could do this with any topic. So fitness. You don't want to start another fitnessblog.com. So let's add some qualifiers. Fitness for guys, you probably see a theme here. That's still pretty broad though, even in this room, there's at least two guys who are specializing in that niche, you know, fitness for guys. So let's add one more, fitness for guys in college. And now you get something like dormfitness.com. And the thing is, guys in college who want to stay in shape are dealing with a different set of constraints, you know? They don't have any money. Well, at least I didn't, you know, if you're in college, you probably don't have any money. You don't have any space. You're sharing an 11 by 15 room with, with another guy. And you have a weird schedule. You're not on the nine to five grind, you know? So, for example, uh, a good piece of content for dormfitness.com would be how to get a full body workout in in your dorm room, you know, or how to get a quick workout in between classes, or, you know, can you work out at three in the morning, you know, stuff that's specialized. And when those guys find you, when those college students find you, they're going to love you because you're just talking to them. You're not talking to everybody else. Method number two. This is similar, but it's a little more personal. Combine your passions. Now, there's a guy in this room uh, who made me think of this example, who is a menswear enthusiast who happens to uh, be into bodybuilding and strength training. And he runs a blog called Iron and Tweed. It's a brilliant niche. You know, because Nate understands that when you have a six inch drop between your chest and your waist, which I don't, you know, I don't, I don't work out. This is just natural. Wow, it's crazy. Um, but he understands that if you have that, you might have to have darts put in the back of your dress shirt so they fit better, you know? And listen, if I go to Nate's site, I'm going to enjoy the content too, but I'm not going to be that raving fan, that guy who shares both of his passions. So you got to think, you know, what makes you unique? And here are some great examples of sites that, uh, that have done this. Broga. Do we have any uh, bros that are into yoga in the room? Maybe just, maybe just nice, yeah. So, you know, yoga tends to be uh, dominated by women. You know, it's mostly women that are into it, and most blogs and YouTube channels and stuff that are about yoga tend to be run by women. This guy starts broga.com, and it's huge now, you know? Because he's focusing on the stuff that guys who are into yoga are dealing with. You know, they're not as flexible. They need different gear. You can't wear yoga pants to yoga class, you know? You gotta wear something else. Uh, Kitchen Treaty. This is a cooking blog where uh, it's a couple, and one of them is a vegetarian. Now, my girlfriend's a vegetarian. I have to cook every Wednesday. 
I like bacon, you know? I like pork. So I, I go to this website every single time because I know that I could go to food.com, I could probably find a recipe that meets both of our needs, but every recipe on kitchentreaty.com meets both of our needs. So now I'm like an evangelist for this site. I'm telling you guys about it because it's specialized, you know? Hacker casual. Casual style for IT guys. Well-built style. Style for guys that work out. So, you know, what can you do with this? And it, it doesn't have to be like this crazy thing that makes you unique. You know, it doesn't have to be that, you know, you happen to be the only astronaut that competes in the Winter Olympics, you know? It can be much simpler, much more baseline, like me. I was like, hmm, you know, what, what am I intimately familiar with? Well, I'm short. Okay, that works. You know, start a blog about that. It can be your age, your profession, where you live, ethnicity, budget, whatever. Just think about what makes you unique. Now, when you settle on that perfect idea, you want the perfect name. And this is where a lot of guys get hung up. Uh, my advice for naming is to pick something and then move on. Because you can spin your wheels for months trying to find the perfect name. And I guarantee that if you ask the guys in this room like Aaron and Antonio how important their name is, I bet they'll say that it's not that important. Now, now you have this powerful brand. You know, you've built this thing. But it doesn't matter what you called it. You would still have this powerful brand. I spent a long time thinking about the name for my site and actually ended up changing it. And it was a pain, you know. And I don't know if it helped. I think the name is much less important than most people think. But it does have to meet some practical criteria. So it should be short, easy, and available, like I like my women. I was practicing this for my girlfriend. She didn't like that one, so yeah. Short, two to three words max. Uh, easy to say and to type, so like a good uh, litmus test. Imagine you were on the phone with your grandma and she said, what's your blog called? And you told her, could she type it in? If she can't, it's probably too complicated or too hard to spell. And then available. You know, ideally the dot com is available. It's not a deal breaker these days. You know, dot co, dot io, whatever. If you have two names, they're both pretty good. One of them has the dot com available, get that one. If you have a name you love and dot com isn't available, don't worry about it. Just don't get hung up on it. You know, pick something to move on buy the domain, hit the publish button, get started. Thanks. Any questions for Brock? I like it. What's up, Brock? <laughs> so um, let's say that you have a name, but you're still trying to find specifically your hook or what your, your topic is. Um, would you suggest trying to come up with a topic to fit your name, or would you suggest trying to come up with a topic and don't worry about the name and just say whatever? Or would you suggest rebranding? I would not suggest uh, rebranding, especially if you already have like, you know, what do you have, like 100,000 followers on Instagram or something? Yeah, I, I, would, I would keep, you know, your current branding and uh, you can become known for whatever your niche is in other ways. You know, make it your tagline or just start talking about it. You know, pe people will know uh, what you're about. You know, the modest man, you don't really know what that's about uh, until you get there. Um, my original domain was shortmanstyle.com, and, uh, you know, it was, it was too blatant. You know, so I changed it, and I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, but it's, it doesn't, like, the name doesn't have to be directly uh, descriptive of your niche. In fact, I think the best names are uh, a little more subtle. Any more questions? That's it. Brock, well done. Thanks. <laughs>